Hello students, I am Parni Jaggi and in this video, which is the fifth video on the story, The Open Window, written by H. H. Munro Saki, we are going to be talking about the style and technique used in the story because the story is not just witty and interesting, but it is also intriguing and full of suspense in a certain way. So when we look at the style of the story, it is told from the third person point of view, limited in the opening paragraphs to the naive perception of Mr. Frampton Nuttall, who is actually tricked by this young girl Vera's mischievous fantasy. Now, because the fantasy is so bizarre, it is odd and it is invented. She has invented the fantasy herself. She had cooked the story and totally unexpected from a 15-year-old girl, the reader is also momentarily duped. The reader also feels confused as to what the girl is narrating may be true or may not be true. Vera's practical joke, which borders on being cruel, is perfectly consistent. So she maintains that consistency. She maintains that tone of her voice and her narration in such a way that the reader also is convinced of the kind of story she is cooking. When Mr. Sappleton and the brothers are seen returning from the hunt, she pretends to be horrified. So the reader, like Frampton Nuttall himself, can only assume, therefore, that this is a supernatural event. So we see two sides of this. She cooks a story that three people had gone out, they died, and they will not come back. But the window is open. So that means there is some kind of a fanciful expectation that the three dead people might come back. And when they really come back, it is like supernatural. So it is for the reader to believe or disbelieve whether what she is narrating is true or untrue. Now when we talk about his style... Saki was known for his satiric wit and his adroit dialects, which perfectly reveals characters typical of the Edwardian social setting of his stories. His characters are very often eccentric bores and colossal liars, types that can be found in his other stories as well, such as A Defensive Diamond and The Strategist. The story then centers on an ironic deception. Deception is a kind of a cheating. You see irony also and you see a kind of a falsehood, a lie also, which transforms momentarily the ordinary into what seems to be the supernatural, then snaps the circumstances back to reality through the clever use of irony. Now, this girl Vera is a typical Saki character type related to the telltale tellers and liars of his other stories, just as Mr. Nuttall is a deserving dupe. So, we see that this man, Frampton Nuttall, who is visiting Mrs. Sappleton's country estate for a nerve cure, is actually duped by this girl Vera's story. But on the other hand, there is also a binary of supernatural and ordinary for the reader as well. The reader is also trapped in the supernatural world created by Vera. But then also when that supernatural world is disclosed, it is unveiled, we see just an ordinary situation coming up. Now, when we talk of the structure of uh, the story, the most remarkable of Saki's devices in the open window is his construction of the story's narrative. The structure of the story is actually that of the story within a story. The larger frame narrative is that of Mr. Nuttall's arrival at Mrs. Sappleton's house for the purpose of introducing himself to her. And within this narrative frame is the second story, which is told by this girl, Vera, who is Sappleton's niece. So when we have a look at the structure, we see that this device of story within a story is very interesting as well as intriguing because it is already a story that this man visits a new neighbor and he wants to discuss about his nerve cure. 
But then this girl again narrates a story within that story and that story narrated within the story is actually intriguing, supernatural and trapping kind of a story. Now when we look at the symbolism, the title itself is the most important symbol of the story, the open window. When this girl Vera, Mrs. Sappleton's niece, tells Frampton Nuttall the story of the lost hunters, the open window comes to symbolize the anger, the heartbreak, the pain, the loss of Mrs. Sappleton at the death of her husband and younger brother, as is narrated by Vera. But when we see that these three men are coming back from inside the open window, the truth is revealed. So the open window then no longer symbolizes anguish, but deceit. It is a kind of a cheating. It is a kind of a lie which has been cooked by this little girl. So Saki uses the symbol ironically by having the open window, an object one might expect. It would imply honesty. It would imply something very open, something very transparent. But here it is a symbol of deceit. Now, uh, we've already talked about this. It is uh, written in a third person narrative, meaning that its action is presented by a narrator who is not only himself involved in the story. So this involves, uh, allows a narrator to portray events from a variety of points of view, conveying what all of the characters are doing and what they are feeling or thinking. For most of the story, until he runs from the house, the reader shares Mr. Nuttall's point of view. Like Mr. Nuttall, the reader is at the mercy of this young girl's mind and the story that she has cooked. So the reader remains, however, after Mr. Nuttall has fled and thus learns that Vera's story was nothing but a telltale. So we see this narration has a kind of a magical effect because we can see the mindset of Frampton we can see the mindset of Vera, we can see the real picture, we can see the open window, we can also see the symbols that are playing their roles. So in a nutshell, we can see the entire scene because it has been written in a third person narrative. Now Vera's story, which is actually a story inside a story, is essentially a tall tale. Now tall tales are often found in folklore and legends and they describe people or events in usually in exaggerated manners. Now we may quote good examples of the this kind of tales as story of John Henry and his hammer, story of Paul bon Bunyan and Babe the Blue Ox. So wherever we see exaggerates the significance of the open window by making it the centerpiece of a fabricated tale of tragic loss. Now we also notice a number of literary devices and qualities in the story and of course we've talked about the narrative, the third person narrative, the story within a story because of which this story becomes even more intriguing and also the symbol that we've talked about is the open window itself. So we see that it is a remarkable piece of fiction and explores a number of important themes using the structure which is as simple but equally intriguing and intricate for the reader to believe or not to believe. So this was my analysis on the style and structure of the story The Open Window. Stay tuned for the next video. Thank you for now.